Four teams remaining in the 2021 Overwatch League playoffs and only one can be the champion. Only one can fill up the 2021 banner that we're seeing before us. We're going to be deciding, getting very close to it at the end of today. Of course, culminating to our grand finals taking place tomorrow. And you know you're not going to want to miss that. But it's bound to be jam-packed, honestly, all the way through. Starting with this first matchup, the San Francisco Shock versus the Atlanta Reign. Two teams been battling against each other all season long as well. Yeah. This kind of rivalry, that it's been there, it's been present yeah. all the way back since 2019. <laughs> and if we want to talk about 2019 just for a moment here, Bren, the San Francisco Shock losing the first round and run it back through the lower bracket. The details are a little different, but don't focus on the <laughs> details. Just drink in the hopium. And I can tell by that fan vote that the desk were looking at, the people, the people are drinking it up. Sure. They believe in San Francisco <laughs> running the salty run back all the way through the lower bracket but they have another team before them today and they have been better over the course of this season the Atlanta Reign are a fierce fierce opponent absolutely yeah. I mean the Atlanta Reign going off the analyst desk as well all of them including the yes. turtle yeah expecting the Atlanta Reign as the well to win this analyst. one out I mean it was so one-sided in terms of their approach to this match I think it's going to be much closer than that as well uh, and I'm very excited to get it under the way as well this clash of styles that's been between a lot of these teams as well. Uh, these two teams are actually quite similar in they a are. lot of ways and a lot they of are. fashions. It's one of the first times we'll see it. So let's introduce our first team in this matchup, the San Francisco Shock. The Shock are starting to feel it a little bit now, Mitch. They're, they're starting to play that aggressive style and play aggressive as a unit. Crack back again. This is 2020 Shock. This is championship winning Shock. Smurf, what a performance! The primal rage of two kills. Joy Yobin, what is that? The Shock, this could be their tournament to ascend back to previous form. While again living the life of the DPS player on the Baptiste, they look extremely well oiled. Oh, you madman! That is ridiculous! That is actually ridiculous! You have got to be joking. The Shock are ready to rumble and they're already rocking the socket. For the San Francisco Shock, they're looking to keep that three-peat dream alive. They've had two championships under their belts as well. This will be the third that they're looking to try and claim. But of course, one team standing by the, oh, wow, in their way for now is going to be going up against it. If you're the San Francisco Shock, you are just taking it one match at a time. You've got to focus on it from that kind of perspective. Yeah. More than capable of it with the talent they've got here. It's hard to overstate just how ridiculous it would be if San Francisco were able to win three in a row. It would just be beyond belief. And the three players you see in the middle there, Super, Choyobin, Violet, they know the taste of victory. They've lifted that trophy twice before. And the Glister, Nero, FD got a new additions to this team that added, added a level of hunger, but also a level of inexperience that some might argue held them back at various times throughout the year. But here in the playoffs, they are performing up to the San Francisco shock level. This team, this starting six, is looking fierce. It's not going to be easy for them in this matchup today. They're up against some opponents that have bested them before in the past. It's the Atlanta Reign. The Atlanta Reign, cool, calm, and collected, answering back with pick after pick. Atlanta Reign with some absurd DPS performances. Gator lays down the shadow. That is beautiful. Oh! <laughs> Oh it's like, okay, well, Pelican's down. Time to step up, I guess. Headshot after headshot after headshot. Stunning defensive work. Oh, my goodness. It's devastating how good Pelican is. Kai! Oh, he gets two. What? And Hawk with the self-destruct. The Atlanta Reign, they're looking straight at the top, Matthew. And this Atlanta Reign is looking very different compared to the ones of uh, previous years. Still a scrappy upstart group of players, but they've got a bit more discipline these days. And they've still got that firepower as well, that extra element that really gives them the edge in the form of their DPS line. In the past, the Atlanta Reign, like you're saying, Brent, were known as 
uh, the team that had amazing DPS players, but they just couldn't quite put it together. And yeah, yeah maybe they'd be able to make an upset, but not a lower bracket run like this. Not a not a playoffs run in general like this. The Atlanta Reign have managed to get into the top four because they are a team now. They're not just a collection of good players. They've had more experience together. Gator and Hawk are no longer a rookie tank line. Iris has been with the team for even longer and has started to develop into a seriously excellent Batiste. And they still have that incredible firepower coming from Kai and, of course, Pelican, the Rookie of the Year, who is going to be playing on low ping in this game because we're playing on North American servers. Absolutely. I, I forgot about that in their game against the Gladiators, but that is a crucial element to their chances of being able to make it through. And they are dangerous. This is a team that's hungry. They've been denied many opportunities. I mean, they've been to Hawaii, I think, more than most teams in this yep. league in this, this year of the 2021 the season. And uh, they really haven't achieved the heights that they were hoping for every single time. This is an opportunity, though, in this matchup right here to upset the two-time champions and take it even further beyond. Nepal is going to be our first map pick. It's the Atlanta Reign that actually get to select this as well. Yeah, which is wild because they're, they're our fifth seed playing against our sixth seed right now. Coming into yesterday, it had all been the higher seeds the entire way through the playoffs bracket. Uh, the postseason dominated by the favorites, and that's not the case here. We have our fifth playing against sixth, historic rivalry, defending champions. There's a lot of pedigree, a lot of talent, a lot of experience in these two teams. And we're going to be starting things out on Nepal. Bren, it is a map which is going to allow for both of these teams to set the tempo early. Whichever team it feels that can get the edge early on in the Rhine matchup, has the psychological advantage over the other. Oh, yeah, because you've got to imagine as well, both these teams, they play similar styles. They like to play the same compositions, roughly speaking, as well. And this is a map where, okay, they're going to be mirroring each other in a lot of scenarios. You can see here, looks like we're leaning possibly over towards Village as the first section, and that's going to be seeing the Reinhardt, the May coming out as well. Yeah. We will see this mirror matchup. If you win that out, you're going to be thinking at the back of your head the entire time. The rest of this, season, uh, this series, if we get taken to a map that suits Rush, the Zombie Comp, whatever, we've got the advantage. Yep. We've got the edge. It doesn't matter what they pick. We should be favored in that. These early maps, map one and map two in particular, really do dictate that psychological edge. If you feel like you can beat the other team in the mirror matchup, it dictates map selections later down the line and your confidence levels in terms of taking it in the future. Got some amazing matchups here, but it's the Ryan head-to-head -head that I'm looking at. First of all, it's Gator against Super. And Hawk has taken so much damage early on, but it's actually Glister who goes down first. No immortality field available for the Atlanta Reign. Super taking a lot of damage. You're going to see that that immortality field is also using a defensive Maywall comes out from the San Francisco Shock to try and keep this one in it. But again, perfect Maywall placement there from Pelican. Locks out the San Francisco Shock as they try and make their retreat. They win out this battle initially. The loss of Glister, you, you can't get past it. That's all of your damage output, or at least the majority of it. Iris has managed to generate a bit of an ult advantage here too, 80%. If he can get up to his ult in the next fight, the Ant Matrix could be pretty crucial, but the shot can just come back in here, take it relatively slowly. Nice May wall to start from Nero. Yeah, it's, it's gonna block off the teleport, actually. They retreat away, the Atlanta Reign are being chased down, though, and that's Kai missing from the fight now. The teleport, again, that wall, intentional. Trying to block off the teleport so they can't take it behind them. But with the Ant Matrix laid down, Violet free to just pepper them away as well, doing all that damage, just amplified up across the point. It's a quick and speedy team fight win. The Maze really are on either side playing such an important role in these fights. Yeah, and Pelican historically this season has got the better end of every other May that he's played against. Uh, Nero would be no exception to that. But it was a great wall there to try and block off the teleporter. But still, both both uh, Batiste's able to get up to their ultimate. And Violet is incredibly deadly. A huge pop to Iris. He's been playing well all season long, but Violet's the original Batiste goal. Oh, wow. And Gator tries to go for the quick little drop down into the Earth Shadow play. But Super, he wasn't born yesterday. It's 10,000 hours of ranked experience you're witnessing right there. But is it enough to watch this? Troy Hillman, what an eat! He blocks up the Blizzard. A major ultimate that's going to be missing for them. And look at that. Violet, perfect with the placement of that one. The Immortality Field to save him in the midst of all of it. Super lays down the Shadow. It sets them up nicely for this team fight win. Now, Super. 4 HP to his name. He's going to go down and he end traded out as no one's really dealt with Massa this entire time. He's been hanging out the back. And look at this. The beat. They're going to be committing the beat into this. They seem to think this is winnable. With FD God falling, it might just be so. Still, that wall does block away Kai from following up on any sort of damage that's being done. And it's really a wasted ultimate. Despite that, the Atlanta Reigns still want to take this fight. But with Kai gone on top of it, the spawn is coming back in from the shock. It looks futile. 
amazing Maywell by Nero to stop Kai from getting in on that fight. If, it, it seems crazy that Massa committed sound barrier to that, but genuinely, if Kai with a sound barrier had been able to get to the objective, he would have cleaned up. The Sim is that dangerous when you get them into close quarters. So Nero's ice wall just completely separating him away and avoiding that clutch potential wins the shock of the fight, and now they're up to 80%. That terrain drop down again. So yeah, goes just scouting, making sure that nobody comes from any other angles that they're looking for. But it's a quick wrap around into the Ant Matrix. Speed boost as well. The wall blocking them. It's going to be a beat. FT God wants to use it to try and save their team. The Immortality Fields also traded out from this one. And what a self destruct. Hawk just sets it down. The Shock really had no answer for that one. They ended up using a lot of tools at their disposal just to try and initiate onto them. They lose the team fight as a result, but they do get 99% in the progress. Great credit there to Gator as well. He lands a shatter that knocks two players down, sets up Hawk for the double kill, and then FD God's just in the mix anyway to give Hawk the triple. That's what, that was absolutely necessary for the rain. And now they're going to hold forwards. It looks like they're trying to get a DMEC onto Choyobin here so that Pelican can get value out of his blizzard. Playing around Alt. that defense matrix just a little bit there. If he got isolated though, surely gets punished. No, oh, he my does. goodness. It just about goes down here. They've already teleported as well. They're going to be breaking their ankles with this one straight up onto the bridge, but Joy. He's frozen up. They don't have the speed boost to disengage with FDG going down, but they're still committing the ultimates anyway. In fact, they flipped the point over. They can't approach it. Pelican from the back, they've already lost the two players now. Are they going to have to try and commit ults? You're going to hold on to them. They realize the fight's over. They're still going to be making it difficult for them, though, as FDG FD God does come in later into this fight. That was very cheap, though, Brent. It was. The Shock lost that team fight, and Atlanta didn't even have to pay that much for it. I thought that they were going to look for the Blizzard as soon as Choyobin got frozen up and taken out of Mech. But they didn't even invest that. They just found picks all over the place as soon as the FD God was isolated. All of that pressure in the choke point forcing out a mistake from Shox Lucio, who's played fantastically so far in the postseason. This now puts an enormous amount of pressure on this final fight. Yeah, Lance Rain, look at that. Two support elements to their name. We need to see some big plays of the Shock are going to be coming back into this one. Advice is the Atlanta Rain who are walking away with it. The Earth Shatter off to the side. Gator Good doesn't luck. find anybody else. It's going to be the freeze of what a Shatter from Super. So many players down. It forces out the sound barrier early on, but the Blizzard, it's locked them all up. The Shock, that's such an ultimate disadvantage. It doesn't even matter for them. They work around it. The overtime is going to start ticking, but no one from the Atlanta Rain able to touch that one. What a miraculous series of events for them to be able to take round number one. They call him the finisher because he lands stuff like that and closes out the rounds. That was absurd. They needed that. That was absurd from Super. What a play. What was that? A four man shatter at the perfect time after blocking Gator's shatter as well. They came oh, yeah. around the side of Pelican's wall. Uh, just a clutch individual ultimate. <laughs> That's what you love to see in the Ryan v Ryan head to head. A little bit of NTD just flips it the tiniest bit in favor of the shock there, and they're able to win a crucial fight. Take a look at the replay from his point of view here. Look at this. Look, the block on the shadow there comes through, backs off, he gets frozen up. That's why Gator oh. doesn't expect it. And as soon as Super comes out of the freeze, he lands the four man shatter. Incredible play, and the timing just couldn't be more perfect. Love these teams. Shaking it off as now heading into this next round with the shock leading. Atlanta Rain have taken a bit of high ground control early. They don't want to push too far forwards as well. The threat of being booped right into the murky depths there is a little bit too much. They're just going to teleport straight to the point. Start to play it now. It's almost unlocked. Choi taking a lot of damage in the process. Look at this flank going on from Nero. He's down right underneath. They're trying to pinch them at the exact same time. And Troy, he's matched them as well. Right into the off angle does end up getting taken out of the mech. But not before Gator's taken out as well. With Violet missing, could be dangerous tidings for the San Francisco Shock. Lister still very powerful. He's got the beam, but no more heals. Both the supports are being taken out from the San Francisco Shock. They don't really have too much more to win this fight out with. If they're able to do it, it would be an absolute miracle for them. But the damage and healing is way better for the Atlanta Reign. Iris was a crucial element there for Atlanta, being able to back off, read the flank as it came through, and both of the supports actually, because it was Massa that shut down the threat from Chuobin. Chuobin got walled off in a corner and taken out by the Lucio of all things, and Iris killed his counterpart, I believe. Violet hitting the deck early on meant no heals, no extra damage from the shock. You can see that San Francisco have good ideas of how they want to break these aggressive holds from Atlanta, but that one didn't quite work. Yeah, teleporter up onto the opposite side, that's an Ant Matrix play. 
They're going for a split approach once more. The Ice Wall. Okay, well, it does block off that one ultimate, and now you see a committal coming through. Symbol from Kai to try blizzard. and stop them, but that blizzard, it's caught everybody. Is there enough damage to Nobody can get around the corner to take out the immortality field, and here Atlanta Rain Masa are investing beat. their own. Massa does have the beat, it starts to get committed, and now everyone is healthy. Gator no right off the map, you're joking! Two players gone. FD God wants to get into the action as well. A couple of environmental kills for them. The Shocker investing even more. They want to try and turn this fight in their favor. They're definitely getting the early pickoffs, and they got the flip of the objective. Not only that, it's time to build up the percentage points as well. They need to get rid of the teleport, which they do so. And this is an awkward, awkward fight. <laughs> it really was an awkward fight, but it was a lovely setup from the shock. They pinned Atlanta Rain into a corner. Violet had an ant matrix that was peppering them from the high ground, and Nero landed a humongous blizzard. There was, <laughs> there was a wild play in there from Gator. That's a block of the shatter. It only catches on to Pelican. Gator has no a response. Way. It goes for it again. again. The madman. It's exactly the same. You have got to be kidding me. Gator just going for that one. Of course, sacrificing himself to take out the main tank. The one for one trade clearly has a lot of faith in his team to try and clean this up. But it's a shock with a massive advantage. You can't look at that play and think it was good if you're going to be losing it at the end of the day. But it definitely does say that he's got a lot of confidence on his team to try and clean up. Absolutely. Gator seems to think if he just takes the one for one trade, his team will be at an advantage. But that is not the way the last two team fights have played out. The Shock are now at 70%. They don't have any major ultimates, though. The Rain, if they can get in a good position, perhaps use the Symmetra Wall to take space early and set up for an Ant Matrix. They could teleport into a nicer high ground position, but the Shock are controlling all of the major areas. There isn't a great sign for Aris to use his ult through. Okay. Unless they rotate around to the stairs. The war comes down. This is still pretty good. Yeah, the Shock is still going to be taking a lot of damage from this, though. They're split from multiple different angles. Going indoors, giving the Atlanta Rain a lot of space, but with Violet falling. Great pick. Yeah, that looks like it should be theirs to take. And just in the nick of time as well. Atlanta are going to maintain, or rather regain, control of the objective. They build up some nice ults, too. They've got a Blizzard and a Sound Barrier that they're going to get in the midst of this next team fight. And so for the Shock, they need to navigate this. The defending team has such an advantage if you can pen them into choke points, but that's why so many teams play with Symmetra right now, because it allows you to get past the chokes. No. So Atlanta are not going for one of their forward holds. Normally a very aggressive team, but they're looking more reactive right now. Yeah. Going to try and take the point. Take the fight on the point as well. Earth Shatter in hand for Gator. He wants to try and get the better of his adversary. Drops it down. That is going to be a connection. So at least a few targets there, but the Ant Matrix in response. No more mentality field, and look at that blizzard. Very spacing from them. Pelican able to just drop that one down, and despite FG, FD got able to take away at least one pick with him before he gets out of there, it is a clean team fight win for the Atlanta Reign. That's the advantage of being on defense. You can set up for those big ultimates. That Blizzard got major value from Pelican. Nero's going to find it incredibly difficult to do the same. FD God's currently oh, getting pressure. Wait, already back the supports in. aren't there. Yeah, the Shock are playing this so quickly. Intelligent from them, knowing that the support line was actually just going to be ferrying them back, and now it's overtime. The Atlanta Reign. How did they get in that quick? They might have just lost the one team fight they needed to win. I cannot believe they made that call, but. They're just going to dump the ultimates in anyway. It's a last chance for them, but not enough. The San Francisco Shock in a dominant fashion. They win it out in just two rounds. If you blink, you would miss it. Well, our observers were oh, watching Master oh, taxiing people back I mean, from spawn. Super, I mean, I, I, I can't lip read. But if I could, I don't think I could say it on broadcast. <laughs> I mean, that was... <laughs> Talking his trash. Yeah, I mean, it looked like he was wondering what they were doing with that maneuver. But the Atlanta Rain, I think they just they lost track of the timings in terms of how fast the Shock were able to, to respond to that. I'm going to be honest, Brent. I lost track of the timings as well. I really thought that the Atlanta Rain had enough time to be able to get back in that team fight. I was amazed when we flicked back to the free cam. And, and there was the Shock just on the point. They just won it. Yeah, they, they had they already killed won two the players. team fight. One of the big problems there is that the Atlanta Rain don't all back off. If you're, if you're taxing people back from spawn, you need to give space. And they took two fights on <laughs> two fronts wild stuff though to finish the first map okay well map number one that was absolutely ridiculous and we're going to be finding out just how crazy this series can really get on the other side of this break ladies and gentlemen remember it is still the elimination match the loser of this one will be going home everything to play for in the 2021 playoffs and you know you don't want to miss a single second of it we'll see you in just a few
Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Part of that original GOATS team that created the triple tank, triple support composition. If you give this guy his comfort rolls, he's a top tier main tank. I mean, the picks are coming through, and that's Gator. Two kills with one fire strike. You love to see it. Look how phenomenally good that pull was from Gator. Oh, yes! What is that? Uh, amazing play by Gator. Again, he's having the game of his life right now. That is huge. Gator's Orisa is excellent. Gator is having a, the game of his life. He's actually having a life game. Gator, so comfortable on this hero. They allowed Monk and Evil Thor to survive into this. If this turns around in favor of Chengdu, that is the crucial element. Gator slams it down. The old one-two combo. Of course it's going to come up with the goods. Oh, Gator's no, going to be pleased with that one. Oh, Gator dropping a bag God. as well. That is just disrespectful, but you'd expect nothing less from the Atlanta Rain. <laughs> what a push from the Atlanta Rain. That's crazy. The Atlanta Rain to have a comeback occurring here, I should say. Uh, currently leading the series, the San Francisco Shock 1-0. They're going to need a little bit more out of Gator 
because from that last map, well, I mean, there were some plays in there. You could think of it as 200 IQ if they worked, zero IQ if they didn't, and they didn't work. <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're referring to the uh, the double pins into the pit. Into the drink, yeah. yeah. And uh, got shouted a couple of times as well, but I think the most important thing is to have a short memory, to brush it off and Absolutely. still have confidence in yourself. Uh, we've seen excellent stuff from Gator in the past. We know he's an incredible Reinhardt player in particular. And as both teams keep the same squads in here, I'm expecting more of that Rhine head-to-head. -head. I said that the first map would be important for establishing a psychological advantage, but I think it's more so the first two maps, honestly. At that point, if you're down, well, then you have to start scrambling. If you've managed to make it one-to-one, -one, you can still feel confident in the mirror. And as we see the Atlanta Rain picking Hanamura, I think this map makes a lot of sense. Uh, the Atlanta Rain looked excellent when they beat the Gladiators oh, by this yeah. yesterday. Yep. They had so many different ideas of how they wanted to make the rush work. And we've seen Shock flounder when they played against the Dragons. And okay, that's the Dragons, but the Shock themselves looked like they didn't have a great plan running the Zombie Comp on this map. So I'm wondering, are they going to opt into a Rush Mirror? Are we going to see something different? But one thing's for sure, though, I would favor Atlanta coming into this. Yeah, it is their map pick. On paper as well, we've seen, like you said, you know, the Shock, they've looked, they've looked weak on this. And you want to be brushing off that initial map that we just witnessed as well. Coming back into this, if you can get a strong lead, not even lead, but evening up this series would be the ideal scenario because it keeps you in the game like you're saying mentally wondering okay well was it just you know us making a minor few mistakes that we can fix up for this next match or are we really going to have to start scrambling for something new this is going to decide all of it the shocker running a rush defense here i think this plays into the atlanta reigns hands the it was massa who said in an interview with upcomer before the playoffs began um and i'm going to paraphrase here but he said we're in a good place if we get to play against more NA teams in the playoffs yeah. because we've practiced against them more. The, the Atlanta Reign understands how the NA teams play. They're not very good in that matchup against the APAC teams most of the time. They, they've struggled a bit against Chengdu, against Dragons, those kind of teams. But Atlanta are very good stylistically, and I think they understand how to play into these teams like Shock, like Dallas, like Gladiators, etc. And here they are on the attack. Teleporter up to that miniature high ground, allows them to drop down, and they're looking for a player to try and isolate whilst keeping Hawk on an off angle. Now the Atlanta Rangers trying to posture, work their way onto the point as well, waiting for the right timings. It's going to be a quick teleport though from the Shock. They're going to be moving all the way up to the high ground. It's a disengage away from them, and what a collapse for that damage being done. Hawk, I think, with the accretion as well, just stunning them up as they try to dive onto them. That's the Atlanta Rain. With they, a great response. They were so ready. It's hard to overstate how ready they were for that. Hawk was on that high ground just as bait. And as soon as the shock teleport went up, Hawk drops down, primes the accretion. There's a boop as well to scatter the shock players. And the Atlanta Raid collapse upon them. I mean, that is a six minute time bank heading into point B. Look at this. Hawk drops down. So much damage flooding into oh, yeah. them, accretion as well. Oh, it connects onto so many. They get rid of the immortality field instantly. I mean, the Atlanta Rain read them like a book. That's what you need. Now they've got a ton of time to work with. Like you said, it was like six minutes. And what is this play from the shock? Up on the high ground, Super and Nero with the teleport. It almost looks like they want to go for a pin play or something. Yeah, something possibly with the wall as well, just to drop down on them. I mean, Viola is in the opposite high ground position and he has an amp matrix, so he's going to be able to do a lot of damage. Here we go. And they mistime it, the TP gets into use. They're actually going to cut the angle completely, but Kai will fall. Nero gets that one. It's a split fight right now. Typically, these compositions, they want to play close together compact as a unit, but for now, it's playing all over the bloody shot. The shock, and quite low. That's a good block of the shadow, though. Super ready with the reaction times. Gator not going to be getting away with that one. And they are slowly winning this one out. Violet's going to end up going down, but with the, the spawn point at least being so close here for the San Francisco shock, they are happy to take these even trades in this team fight. And the Shock didn't even have to use any of their ultimate back. So now they're heading up to six ults to start to defend and whittle away this time for the Atlanta Rain. Uh, not that it was expensive for the Rain either. They just threw a Shatter in there to see if they could turn it around halfway through. But they've got to be wary now of crazy plays that Super's going to make. That uh, that wall with Super dropping into it was a clear counterplay to the teleport coming out from Kai. And I'm sure Shock have more than one up their sleeve. Yeah, a lot of ults available to them. 
Hawk does have this Gravitic Flux as well. TP straight to the point. There's only the one player. That's a teleport gone. Down and out. The Blizzard actually just dropped down as well at the choke point to try and lock them up. That's going to be a lot of ultimates committed, though. Yolanta Rain still just chucking everything into it. The Blizzard was aided by Troy at the same time of things, but with Nero falling, it's ideal for the Atlanta Rain if they can just keep holding on. Good shatter. What a shatter from Super. Completely locks them up. The Atlanta Rain just unable to really participate whatsoever at the tail end of this team fight. A couple of players left standing as well. There are so many mind games that are occurring between both of these teams. It's clear that they are... At least they've got a very good grasp on how both teams like to play these rush compositions, either through scrims or whatnot. It yeah. seems like they are aware of the tendencies to teleporters as well. Yeah. Both it's teams, are, uh, they've concocted like these, these set plays to disrupt it. Yeah, and, and to, just to speak about the one that happened there, as Kai goes for the teleport, Pelican goes through it, but there's a blizzard comes out from Nero that denies the rest of his team. So the Shock are trying to use their ults to proactively disrupt what the Atlanta Reign are going for. But the Shock don't really have any good ults left, so they've got to try and go aggressive. They forced out Immortality Field early. Oh, Super's in trouble! What a shatter! He drops it down, and it gets them all low. He will trade with it with his life at the end of the day, but San Francisco Shock more than ready to follow up on what he's just done there. Super's crazy! I can't that, believe that. He, he's got another shatter in that team fight, Brent. He's playing so aggressively as the Atlanta Reign come in, but they might have overstend, overextended a little bit here. Atlanta don't have their full six remaining, but they are going to try and commit to this fight. Yeah, Lance Rain have got the Simwall to split this one up. San Francisco Shock are going to be regrouping for just a moment. That's a South to Shock off to the side, and it does get the D-Mech out of Hawk. Not going to have that for this next team fight. Out of Simwall from the Shock as well. They're getting the Spawners back out. Short. Troy is down. Sambire as well to leak this one forwards. They're getting all the kills now that they could possibly need. Super oh. down to the remake got kill. Dunked. And no one's dealing with Iris. Impeccable timing there with the mortality field just to keep the team up and running. The Shock are committing the ultimates. Of course, FD God wants to try and keep them back into us. They've got to try and stall this one. But already almost two ticks gained. The Atlanta Reign have got a lot of firepower right now. All the players alive. They chase down Glister, moving over to the Doomfist. It's a bit of a desperation play from them. Orc now using his South Destruct as well, just so he can try and get back into the mech and back into the fight with Troy going down. On top of it, the Shock really just tossing the bodies into it, but the ultimates just keep coming back up for the Atlanta Reign. Kai and Iris in particular just continue to do damage and healing throughout it all. This is Glister's second foray in no with way. that Doom. Are the, so are the Shock actually me. turning There's this? There's no way. Violet no killed way. Iris! There's Violet no killed way! Kai. There's no way they're able to clutch this out! 97.1%! They've got to try and turn this one. It's a charge from Gator. He has the Earth Shatter. They're looking to try and close this one out right here, right now. Pushing them away into the corner. The Earth Shatter. It is a connection onto one, but the Atlanta Terrain. They invest that Soundbarry into it as well. Well, still stunned up around the corner. Get it, get it very, very low. Immortality Field dropped into the self destruct. The teleporter to try and get them back into the action. The shock that is a self destruct kill onto Nero coming back in. But the shock have the spawners. Shield being held. They FD do not God. want to give this one up. FD got coming back and he has the beat. But he dies. dies with it. No beat in action. The turret takes him out. The Atlanta Rain. That one singular play may have just saved them here. And it has. They get the capture. 58 seconds online but looking so, so dangerous. That was a truly unbelievable fight. I cannot believe what we witnessed there. The, the fact it started with the rain capitalizing on a shock overextension, and he pushes back, they push back in with less than their six players available and just take all of that space. And then insane clutches, especially from Violet on the San Francisco Shock, to be able to take down Iris, who was just pumping out constant damage, constant heals. And and it's, it really did look like Shock were going to turn it if FD God had not died to that Sim turret. And you can... There are mistakes flying all over the place in such a hype and tense situation. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, but what but I think, you, you can't, I, yeah. <laughs> I think the shock can frankly be happy that they got it under the minute mark. If they manage to complete, even if it's in overtime, they're going to be good. I'm amazed that FD got even got up to a beat here. Yeah, the fact. Uh, okay, he has to go for it. It was a defining moment that could have saved the shock there. But, but like he, you said, they're lucky they even got it to 58 seconds. And frankly, they should have lost that at least over a minute ago. If you look at FD God's play there, what's he supposed to do? Die with it and then try and come back 10 seconds later? They've already oh, lost. No, They've already it. lost if he dies in that instant. So it's...
it's low risk because <laughs> you, you, you've lost either way if you don't press the Q button. I can't and it's high reward if you manage to get it off. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Shock on attack. They're going to run the zombie comp here, so a bit of a deviation. The Atlanta Rain running a double shield defense. Huge amount of poke damage coming out from Kai and Pelican. We've seen this play before. The Shock have tons of mobility, though. They get through the choke without taking any damage. And the Shock are running this comp against the Atlanta Rain. Well, sorry, I should say, against the Shanghai Dragons, they were getting chewed up pretty often. But that opening pick onto FT God. The Shock aren't going to have the speed boost now to work around here. Oh my goodness, they're all caught into the corner. The, no. the damage coming in, they're all so low. Surely the Atlanta Rain just collapse onto them here. They do. Yeah, they them up. Pelican's a beast in this defense. He constantly holds it off angles, and he's getting hardcore pocketed by Massa the entire time. So. He's not particularly worried. He has the mobility to be able to escape if you try and pressure him. There's nothing the shot can do to really pin him down. They don't have any long-range hit scan. They don't have any stuns. I suppose they could hack him if yeah. Glister can get in a position, but he's not normally going to be vulnerable. No time to catch your breath with these compositions. I mean, the team fights are just getting rassled off one after the other. There's a coalescence build early, though. Viola wants to try and lead this one in with the team. A lot of healing going their way. Pelican, obviously, the amount of damage he did in that prior team fight, he's already built up that duplicate as an answer to it. They can get the D-Mech off onto him. It won't be too bad for them, but with Kai, that's a fantastic pick-off. Nero's taken out. A lot of the damage is going to be gone for them now. South the Shock dropped off as well. It means the Shocker can be split up, disjointed. This composition, again, it wants to play together. They're not able to do that. Yeah, the Shock. I, I really don't know what the win condition here is for the Shock. It's got to be an enormous EMP. But the Atlanta Reigns composition plays so spread out, with Kai on one side of the map, Pelican and Massa on the other, Iris healing Hawk and Gator from distance because he's a Batiste, and everyone has good ultimates to try and zone them away. It is very hard for Glister to find a solo target, EMP them, and then the rest of the Shock to follow up without getting punished. They're taking so much damage as well early on. Violet and FT got so low, the EMP it only catches onto Massa. And he already popped Valk. And the Valkyrie's already popped. More than safe in this scenario. Gravitic Flux from Hawk is going to catch all of the players necessary to try and win this one out. And that is going to be the shock as well, going right back to the drawing board. This zombie comp that they like to play, we were chewed up in the past. You can see Super did commit this Primal Rage. It got Iris, but... Is that enough? The Shock's no, comp I mean does play... Oh, yeah, of course they res it. I thought yeah. the res had been used earlier, actually. That was the only kill that they managed to generate in the middle of that fight. I mean, that's... It is so difficult to crack this Atlanta Rain point A defense. And for the Shock, they just used all of their best ultimates. They used the EMP, they had Coalescence, they had Primal. It just feels unwinnable. How do they win? They'd have Seriously. a better chance running a rush comp here and having Super on Rhine, I think. At least then you're able to get in the face of some of the Atlanta players and can survive a little longer. The Shock's current composition only has one burst of momentum as they use all of their engage abilities. A minute remaining for the Shock. Dragon Strike to push them away in Pelican. Well, it's taking another off angle. The duplicate form as well onto the Diva. He's going to be building up that South Destruct so quickly. The beat dropped. FD got. They want to commit into this fight, they want to try and win this one out. And Nero, to be fair to him, hasn't gone down yet with Gator taken out. They could potentially still win this one yet. Death Blossom in close quarters. That's Hawk removed from the fight. And they're all just kind of locked up indoors. The Shock looked like they found the edge they needed here to win out this fight. But still, yep, getting the tail end of these kills, the straggle kills. That's exactly what they need to make sure that the Atlanta Rain can't recontest. Oh, right. Really good execution on that from Shock. They managed to find an opportunity to pressure down Gator and Hawk without getting disrupted by Pelican's duplicate. A lot of credit to the Shock for how they managed to make that one work. There was only 30 seconds left. That was their last opportunity. Otherwise, Hanamura would have fallen. Now Pelican moves over onto the Torbjorn. Oh, yeah. This is a very annoying pick for Glister. I mean, I love this Torbjorn adaptation coming out from the Atlanta Rain. They still have ultimates as well. Looking at this, the Gravitic Flux to get them chewed up when the San Francisco Shock attempt to try and push as well. Yeah, Glister can get a great EMP in this position. EMP, Coalescence, everyone jumping onto it. Glister ends up going down. They do get the one, the EMP. Connected onto Gator, it's locked up that one pick at least. Are they going to be able to disrupt any of this though as the Gravitic Flux gets off? It buys space for the res. Gator back into the action and with Violet down, no more heals for them. Ultimate still committed though, the Shock. It's going to be the Primal Rage used, but Super realizes, well, it's not a winnable fight. Just got to exit out of this one. Even with his Primal. And now the Shock do make adaptations. They're going over to a rush comp. I think this is a good idea actually. Uh, they're going to find it difficult in this first fight, navigating against a supercharger, but once their ult cycle starts to go, and they still have two minutes, so multiple opportunities, the Shock should have a better chance than running that zombie comp. 
But he can play it slightly more spread out because Violet is playing Batiste rather than Moira. He's got that long range damage, long range heal opportunities. Moira doesn't have, but oh Kai my. again with the first pick takes down Glister. It's one thing to do it when the Sombra's right in front of your face. It's another thing when it's a long range pick through a Reinhardt shield and a defense matrix. That one's gutting for the shock because it takes 30 seconds off the clock and they really haven't built up to any of their ults at all here. Violet is getting fed healing by Super just taking poke damage. So the first ult to come online that's going to be important is Violet's Amp Matrix. Oh boy. Iris going to be using the Amp Matrix though. The Shock are already into their spawn side. Flipping it around, positioning wise. Violet taken out though once more. And look at Kai. Just sandwiched in at the spawn door. And the team, of course, are just going to be pincering them as all of this is going on. Hawk's not going to leave his man hanging. They just collapse onto it. The Shock. It feels like with the, okay, the switch over to the rush composition to be fair, but they are just getting stalled out so often, whether it's a pick from Kai or the ultimates being used, something, anything. Once the Atlanta Rain get this composition going with the ultimates, it's so difficult to try and break through. It is, and that's a great reason why the Atlanta Rain went here. And now we start to see why it was so important that Shock ticked this into underneath one minute for the Atlanta Rain's time back. If they can complete, even in overtime, they will still get one more opportunity to attack but they've still got to make it work this time around. There was so much damage that went through to them there, and they have to contest against a Supercharger. This has to just be a disengage for the Shock. They can come back in with double support ult, though. They can't play this. Yeah, Pelican, <laughs> and he's got the duplicate form, at least, onto the Tracer. We'll be able to build up the Pulse Bombs if he survives it out, but now taken out of the form. And now that they've waited out these ultimates, it's the Shock's time to re-engage into this. The Amp Matrix dropped down. Pelican could not go anywhere. The Flight cooldown, not quite there, just couldn't engage away from the line of sight angles. FD God is going to be keeping his team alive, but now you see that Gravitic Flux used again. When he onto the one target, it was dropped away. Nero ended up using that Ice Block, and he is on a high ground position currently. Pelican back into the action, though. Might be able to do a bit of damage for them, but the shock in this overtime push, they've got all the kills they need. The engagement was clean from them. Yeah, especially the Ant Matrix. Violet doing so much work in that fight, and they capture it up in overtime. Like, yeah, and I the mean... only reason they're alive right now in Hanamura is because they got the Atlanta Rain time bank to 58 seconds. What a huge difference those two seconds makes. And it could be critical as we head into this match. I mean, with the compositions that these teams like to play as well, a minute... The Shock's comp, honestly, he, when they're running the zombie comp, I guess, as well, what you want to call it, a Lucio Moira. If they can win that initial team fight off, which is where the, the comp typically ends up being strongest against the double shield, because the enemy team doesn't have ultimates, they don't get the pick that he needs, it's, it's snowballing is all I'm trying to get at here. Yeah. It could really snowball into the Shock's control. But it requires getting a good initial fight yeah and that's what they've been struggling with so much it's taken them two three four attempts just to get the right team fight like this for example an opening pick on virus is just so crucial now lance rain had already lost a couple of players at this point though that really the opener that i would highlight is pelican staying in line of sight of violet's amp matrix he tried to dive away but the shock he knew the shock were coming in and he knew that violet had the ultimate and he got punished for it. He got punished for hanging around too much, and it gave the Shock the opening they needed. Here, though, it all comes down to your point A, attack and defense. Atlanta have definitely been better, so Shock, their backs are still against the wall here. Oh, yeah. The Atlanta Reign are looking at this and thinking, okay, this is our opportunity right now to bring this one to one. Shock are going to be playing the rush composition. They actually teleport right up to the high ground. I think it's a better idea. It is a way better idea in terms of how they can take this first team fight off. They've got to worry about Kaido. On the hands of this guy's been a menace to society, being able to find so many opening picks for them. So intelligent as well oh, with the positioning. I thought he got getting there. that arrow kill. Possibly Pelican getting quite low as well. Now the Shock looking for something, but Choi, he gets d -mecked. The Mortality Field dropped as well. The Shock, they're running out of ults to use, or at least the tools on top of it. They'll drop this Ant Matrix through, but the Atlanta Rain, well, they should win this one out. Kai will get removed from the fight oh, towards the end. Only 13 seconds left for the Shock now to repush this one in. It doesn't look likely they're going to be able to touch this one, and the Atlanta Rain have got enough bodies, especially with that res online, that they do stop them from getting checkpoint A. But Brent, it might have already been enough 
93.1% is what the Shock are going to end with. And I think that's fabulous compared to what you would expect. Their, their Lucio Moira Winston comps would never. No, I mean, <laughs> and they look so much better as soon as they run the rush on point A. It forces the Atlanta Rain at least to give them ticks as they try and set up on complementary crossfire angles. Yeah. And it's not like Kai, Pelican, Gator want to contest the objective against a rush comp. You, you really can't. So just the added sustainability and the fact that Super can hang around with his shield up constantly, allowing the Shock to stay in positions instead of continue moving around the map. Just they can dominate the objective and tick the clock up. Atlanta are now the ones under pressure here. Two minutes to essentially cap checkpoint A. There's not that much difference between 93 and fully captured. Yeah, and a weird turn of events. I think the Atlanta Rain is still going to be feeling pretty good against their chances here. They had a really good read in terms of how to disrupt the shock when they were playing these Lucio Moira comps. I mean, they've seen exactly uh, the teams that they went up against and how they ended up besting them on Hanamura. If we think about how the Atlanta Rain's attack worked last time, they teleported up onto the, the hut, the high ground. They left Hawk there on Sigma. The San Francisco Shock tried to punish that, and the Atlanta Rain read it completely. You know that the Shock are not going to do the same thing this time around. If Hawk's on that off angle, they'll just leave him there and they'll go for somewhere else. And Choyobin's through, gets the scouting, they realize they're playing the rush mirror. There is, of course, that significant difference with Hawk playing the sig. We'll see where Atlanta Rain teleport to this time. They're going for the top rafters, it well, seems. The thing is, the Shock were kind of incentivized to play the point here. They don't want to give up any tick percentage. Yeah, they were playing the point last time. They just chose to go aggressive. This position from Hawk, though, it's not going to get challenged, I think, because Atlanta have already proven they know how to deal with that. Yeah, and he's going to be pumping in the damage from this high ground location. The Shock, though, rotating around the left-hand approach. Super taking a lot of damage, has to hold the shield up. Way too much spam going their way. It has to be the defensive Maywall, and now Nero doesn't have it to try and stop them from pushing forwards. Damage still coming through. Ultimate's almost online right now. It's anyone's game, and the Atlanta Reign are looking for any possible edge. Both teams getting out Matrix up here. That could be a crucial factor. There it is. They're going to be dropping it straight into them. The Atlanta Rain, though, it's going to be the wall to block them off, and they rotate the positioning around. We've got at least one tick on the board, and there's a better ultimate coming through for them. And they're going to be able to contest this with Nero going down. It doesn't look likely. It's going to be traded. Pelican falling. Still, anyone could turn this. Violet need a big ultimate for it, but with Violet going down, now Super with the Earth Shadow. He has to find something massive, and it's not going to be the case. Hawk, the Gravitic Flux is perfect. It shuts them out, and they are going to be able to get this final capture and take away the map. Incredible play from the Atlanta Rain there. Nice adjustment from the Shock as well, but it is just not enough. Atlanta looks so good on Hanamura, incredibly prepped, and even against the best in the world, they're able to make their rush comp work. This is a really interesting match. Both teams now being able to assert their dominance on their map type, I suppose, with these Reinhardt rush comps. Yeah, and it's... It's that added extra flexibility that the Atlanta Reign have got that I think gives them the win here as well. They've got way more compositional answers as well to what the Shock might want to do. Not only that, of course, I mean, the strategic differences in terms of knowing exactly what Shock we're going to do on the attack side, it sets them up nicely for the win conditions. Really well played from them evening this up. I mean, I was a little bit concerned, honestly, off the back of that first map that we might be seeing the Shock kind of running away with this a little bit. Atlanta Reign not getting back into this. Gives me hope now, Josh. We might be seeing another five map. <laughs> I can absolutely see it. But this is going to be the first time heading into our next map that Shock gets to select one. These two maps that we've seen so far have been Atlanta's picks. One working expertly, one not quite. It's one to one in the series. It certainly is. We're going to go to a short break. And on the other side of things, of course, we're going to be finding out what map three has in store for us. It's so even as it stands. Right now, either team can really take it in this elimination match of the 2021 Overwatch League playoffs. We'll see you in just a few minutes. The Overwatch League is brought to you by TeamSpeak the official voice supplier of the Overwatch League.
cannot wait to see what Overwatch 2 content we're going to get from this weekend. And from the Hero Reworks to the Pro Player Exhibition match, you certainly don't want to miss it. Tune into the Watchpoint pre show starting 4 45 p.m. Pacific on September the 25th. That's tomorrow, just before the Grand Finals, to finally get some updates. And stay tuned through the Grand Finals to see the exhibition match by the Overwatch League pros as well. This is going to be Honestly, one of the things I'm most excited about yeah. tomorrow as well, because, yeah, I mean, it's going to be fun to see it as well, especially when, you know, people were being so mean as well when we saw the initial Overwatch 2 playtest. Mm -hmm. And I, I and I'm I don't know the Overwatch two players. I'm curious what their what their thoughts are going to be on the on the game as a oh, whole yeah. as well. It's going to be it's going to be really cool to see. I think it definitely is, and that's going to include players that have been eliminated from the playoffs. And I can tell you this: the shock and the rain, they'd like to play Overwatch two, but not more than they'd like to advance in the playoffs. <laughs> they would much <laughs> much rather not be involved in that actually, and they'd like to be playing in the grand finals. Here we see our next map, the first selection by San Francisco in this series series and they're taking us to King's Row. The interesting part about both of these teams having similar styles is that they play maps that both are comfortable on. Oh, yeah. King's Row would be the selection I'm sure by either of these teams but the Shock did set a phenomenal time last year against Toronto. 4 minute 42 is kind of crazy, kind of <laughs> crazy. Uh, and that's your map leaderboard presented by Xfinity. The Atlanta Rain, though, have looked like the better team on this map in recent history, in the playoffs, I would they say. Have, yeah. uh, but both are very comfortable on it. Interesting to know here as well as we head into King's Row, that the Shock actually haven't made any substitution changes. Mm. When they last played, I think, or the most recent times, and they played King's Row as well, they swapped it up. You remember the Violet Lucio when they were yes. coming out of the gates with this thing? That was mainly because FD God wasn't playing in it. They were kind of set up more so for you know, the double flex support backline. Yeah, they were playing Arisa comps quite a lot. Actually, yeah. So th this says to me, Bren, the fact that there were no substitutions indicates that they want to play Rush, that they know Atlanta are going to try it, and the Shock feel confident that they can mirror it. And they'd prefer to do that rather than have Twilight in and play double flex support comps with the Arisa. It's, uh, it's a stylistic decision. Uh, the strategy shifts depending on what your opponent is. It's not just we play this comp on this map. The teams have prepped a variety of styles for their most important games, potentially in their career for some of these, for, for most of these players. Mm -hmm. For the Shock, yeah, they are going to be playing those rush compositions on the defense. Kai will be looking for an early pickoff if he can get it on the Widowmaker. I, I can't remember the last time we saw a player actually get an early pick! Oh my god! Okay! Well, that, that is hubris from Violet trying to contest that early. Okay. They've just been gifted the best pick you could possibly ask for. Well, spoke that one into existence. Uh, I now remember Josh the last time I saw a Widowmaker get a pick <laughs> out of the gate. Now I do. I'm definitely going to remember that one. Oh. And they are set up to succeed. The Shock, they're going to try and contest this one. It's all over. If you lose Violet that early, it, I mean, done. it's done. It is done. It's done. Not only did they lose Violet, but Gator caught Glisto with an additional piece of spam. His fire strike got finished off and got the kill. And so it's an early pick in both of those team fights. Unforced errors from the Shock, but it is a gorgeous kill. From Violet's point of view, though, there's simply no need, is there? I think Choyobin's flying up top. Maybe they think they can get, like, a defense matrix yeah, to block the line of I sight. Don't I don't know. It just seems unnecessary. It's one error. And now I finally see the reason that we see players switch to Widowmaker, even though normally people don't peek their heads out. But oh, yeah. If it happens once in scrims, you think, well, it's worth trying a match, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, exactly. A nice war from Atlanta again. Violet jumps up on top of it, doesn't actually opt to use that immortality field, it's going to be saving it. Super stuck in the octagon. Yeah, now we see, that's going to be the Ambatrix used by the Atlanta Rain, they've actually caught this at a nasty angle, super, he can't withstand that kind of damage. And it has to be the Ice Wall just being used to try and push them back and away, it's defensive in nature. The Shock do not want to fight this, instantly disengaging. And the Shock are only just starting to get their ultimate cycle online, Violet. Getting close to that Ant Matrix, Nero with a Blizzard as well, slightly outpacing Pelican actually. But these May Walls have been incredibly important for the rain in terms of keeping this momentum flowing as they go through the map. Here's the teleporter up to the high ground. Really nice positioning for the rain. And they overwhelm Violet and push him back from his own amp matrix. Yeah, the window gets nothing. Nothing at all. And look at the Atlanta Rain's pace. Already the cart 
Just really trailing just behind that checkpoint B. They've got a nice little ice wall there. The May wall, okay. Maybe they can make something work with this one, but look at that South Strike right over the top of the blizzard. It pushes them away. They can't swing into it as a result of it. And now they come back in. Massa, the sound barrier is excellent. The Atlanta Rain have got a lot of health to work with. Troy just trying to avoid a lot of their minor side angles, but look at the DPS go. They're rolling them. Yeah, it starts out with a pick on Violet. Uh, that, that sound barrier from Massa, earlier than the one on FD got. FD got still 2% away from getting the sound barrier. The shock, I mean, there has never been a time where you could talk about momentum more. The rain got that early pick onto Violet and have just been pressing the advantage ever since. Oh, yeah. The shock are on the back foot constantly. They're, they're at an ult disadvantage. The, the rain are barreling into them. They've got better positions. They're constantly fighting uphill. Simor's going to be used just to try and at least play around this amp matrix that they've dropped down. That's going to be one for the San Francisco Shock. Super takes a ton of damage. Just trying to get that one off as well. But the Atlanta Rain, they realize, okay, we have to respect it, have to drop around the corner. It's going to give them a breather for a moment, but not too long. Troy ends up using his self-destruct in a weird fashion there, just dropping it down. Yeah, that wasn't intentional. I think there was supposed to be a self-destruct engage, and he just didn't press the boosters. Shadow comes out there from Gator, doesn't get too much. In fact, walled up, I believe, completely disjointed it from Nero. Comes back, round, what an earth! Shadow into the teleport, two players down. It's going to be the counter charge as well that comes through from Gator, but is it enough to try and keep them in this one? Look at all these walls intersecting each other, just cranking 90s all over King's Row. But it is the Shock who win this one. Or is it? The Atlanta Rain still going back in with kills. Massa does take out Super. It does force them now to the use this blizzard. blizzard. Nero's committing this one, and it does force out the Sound Barrier once more. Massa wants to come back into this one. They've got the close spawn points. They could come back into it with ults, and they are going to. Ant Matrix, window drop down, extra damage for them. Chopping and changing every single direction. And now the Atlanta Rain have managed to bully their way forwards. The San Francisco Shock really don't have anything to respond with. Teleporter up to the high ground as they try and contest that area. Choyoban and Glister working together. They push oh back Gator boy. for but a moment. Violet's immortality field has already been forced out. Yeah, so many abilities forced out, but Massa goes down. That's an important pick. It's so important for them. FD God's getting close to ultimate as well. The Shock should be able to stabilize here. Atlanta, it would behoove them to back off a little bit and regain themselves, regroup and go for another push. I mean, if they don't get that pick onto Massa, they've used their immortality field, ice block, ice wall. Yeah. No tools, really, to be able to use to win out that fight. It's, it needs to be done for the shock, but now the Atlanta Rain again. No messing around, no time to wait. They're going to be going straight in. That's so much damage off onto them. Pelican has the Blizzard in hand, but knows he needs to be careful about way where he ends up using it. Defensive ice wall again, but the freeze comes through. That's going to be Nero just committing his own gate so low, swinging away. Along with the Ant Matrix on top of it, Shock finally probably feel like they can actually take a bit of a breather here as they do win a clean team fight. What we saw in the past from Atlanta and why they looked so good on King's Row is their, their smart compositional adjustments to be able to deal with their opponents. Now they're in a mirror match, there aren't that many options for you to be able to generate an advantage over your opponent. It's much more about positioning, alt usage, how you take engagements. This high ground control from Choyobin and FD God is crucial right now. As they move from high ground to high ground, they're adapting to where the Atlanta Rain are teleporting to. And Glister may at some point choose to teleport back up to the high ground with Choyobin to retake those areas of the map. They punish Pelican. That was that aggression again, up on the high ground, getting that good position, and now the shot can press the advantage. That one pick. That's all they really need to get things rolling. and. It's back and forth. I it's mean, like a ballet. It is. The yeah. Atlanta Rain are trying to contest for this, this positional um, this positional advantage, they want their Diva on the high ground. They would like to have their uh, their Batiste on the high ground as well. Mass is going to help them establish that position and then play more around the walls than just in a static position. But they're constantly pushing against a Shock that knows how to adapt. And Shock now have a huge amount of ults. I mean, both teams do. This is going to be an enormous fight. War comes through, and Matrix on top of it. It's going to force out the beat. FDGO wants to use him. The Blizzard does not get a oh, the up. Shatter. A shatter from Gator. Oh, my word. What a way to open things up. And a Shock Force to just commit ults to try and at least hold on to this one. Simmo and Matrix off into the back, but it's too late, I think. The Atlanta Rain. Oh, they've got ults to chuck out. They've got ults to burn. This card is going to start to get rolled in, and that is going to be a minute and nine seconds on the board for them. That is a push from the rain. What, a what an execution. Gator. Yeah, that it, it wasn't just the fact that Gator gets off the shatter, 
but they set that play up by walling in front, so they block line of sight from the shock. They throw the uh, Blizzard in there as well from Pelican, and they instantly drop wall and shatter at the same time. Mm -hmm. So Shock can't see it coming, and they're trying to reposition based on where the Blizzard is coming in. It's a lovely play that coordinates multiple people together, especially Pelican and Gator, to execute that and set their Reinhardt up for a monster play. And Brent, we've already seen on Hanamura the difference being either side of the minute mark can make. The Shock, even though they lose the map, had their opportunities to stay in it because they dragged the Atlanta Rain time bank underneath a minute. They have failed to do that here on King's Row. A minute and nine seconds means that if the Shock complete in OT, they're stuffed. And it could be a massive, massive difference maker. This is... Really heating up between both these teams. A reminder as well, the trivia, live.overwatchleague.com. You can participate in that. Not sure what that question was. I ended up missing it. But listen, I'm not giving you the answers anyway. <laughs> Let's take a look at this replay as well. This is that shadow towards the end. I mean, this is excellent. Oh, that's what? so good. Actually, the wall was miles away too. Yeah, and the wall was really far away. I thought that the Blizzard may have forced them to... Uh, I guess uh, for Super to drop the shield at least, but it was all instinctual from Gator. It was Completely actually. instinctual. Yeah. Now that you look back in the replay, that was, you know, there's an attempt at a set play, but really that's just Gator finding it, feeling it in his gut. Already the battle begins, no time to wait whatsoever. The teams are just clashing straight away. Gator's gonna get frozen up here. Pelican and Nero, they trade lives. Taken out in this fight. Gator has to hold the shield here, needs to be careful. And now with that, that Matrix, that's built up so quickly. That's in the first 30 seconds. You gotta be kidding me, Violet. He's so good. He's just been able to burn down the Atlanta terrain and moving from teleport to teleport, finding these kills. The tracking's immense as well. Takes down Iris just for the uh, for the cream on top, the cherry on top. Sure. I mean, <laughs> yeah, a bit of redemption, I guess, for the opening mistake yeah. that cost them that five-minute time back, I guess, from checkpoint B. But that is a rapid takeover. Yeah, really nice execution on point A. Now it's about keeping the momentum flowing. Because the Atlanta Rain are going to be able to set back up here. If you think about this the other way around, when the Shock were trying to recontest point A, they got torn to pieces and it created this avenue for Atlanta to surge forwards on attack. That's not the case this time around. Atlanta are able to stabilize and hold this choke point. Makes a big difference for the defense. And they've got ults to use as well. Remember, Violet ended up using his own. They teleport right back behind them once more. Simul on top of it to be intersecting them just so that they can't really play around this one. It's a good shot from Gate. Actually, no, it just misses off onto the side. FD God comes in with the beat as well, just to give them that extra survivability. Let's get rid of that teleport for now, but with the positioning swapped around, the Shock will be able to win out an edge on top of this one. Super getting very, very low. Another window dropped down. Nero goes down. The Atlanta Reign, they've got a player advantage. Moving into this one, Super, Shatter in hand, has to try and hold the shield to survive, but already locked up once more. That's Pelican's Blizzard doing so much work. Gorgeous counter blizzard by Pelican. Nero had already thrown his in earlier. It only caught Gator and Hawk. The back line was in such a great position to be able to just back off from it. But that, that counter blizzard is everything for the rain. Both of these teams are so coordinated with how they're taking uh, un and threatening repositions with these teleporters. Glister just going into the back line, and you never know whether it's going to be real or fake. Oh, quick wall around the corner. Nero forced to use that ice spot just to try and survive this one. and. Well, that's a little bit too much damage to overcome. Super got melted as he tried to shatter there. He got killed mid-animation. And Gator just takes the opportunity to throw down his own. Yeah. As the Atlanta Reign are going to clean this one up. It's a freebie when you know there's no shield on the opposing side. Might as well as just to make the team fight nice and clean. And yeah, I mean, that's Massa setting that up with a boop off to the side. Yeah. Super just... Yeah, just didn't have the team to really support him in that manner when they're playing around that choke point. But again, no time wasted. Right back at it once more. Teleport. They're going to be taking it again. That's an Ant Matrix. This time the Atlanta Reign are ready for it. They actually push all the way react. back. It's a fantastic reaction. Moving away. Now we see that Simmore being used by Kai. It actually just blocks them off at the choke point. It's unusual. They, they flipped the map. They can't push around from this one. But yes, they do flip the map in the process. 
Just trying to get that one edge over one or the other. Hawk ends up using that self-destruct. I think just trying to survive. They flip the positioning around on top of it with the teleporters. Violet's not going to have the immortality field, but Massive with the beat. FD God, that causes him to use one of his own, but it's too little too late. They've lost two players in the process of this one. Can the Shock try and edge it out? Gator so low, he will fall in the end. The Shock have just about found the advantage they were looking for. A shadow for Super, but does he choose to use it in this fashion? Just about missing that fire strike. Another Blizzard committed in close quarters. That's Pelican trying to even it out. And now, finally, the Shatter is going to get used. It's on to one. The charge comes through. Just needs to hold it and survive as the spawners come back in. The Shock want to fight this one. They're dragging this it out. What a turnaround. Both teams thought they were going to be able to win that team fight. Choyobin being able to take down Gator while surviving on less than 20 health, I believe. And then Pelican invests his Blizzard into things. It forced out the Shadow from Super, which was good, and it set them into this position. Two minutes, with the Alliance Rain able to defend here. These teleporters have just been crazy. Both teams flipping around, having great protocols to defend against each other, too. Target, what a Shadow from Gator. That's Troy caught into the corner, and FDGOT tries to peel, but takes an out in the end. The Blizzard dropped down. Nero might be able to lock up some targets for them to try and clutch this one. And look at how low Massa was. He backs away and gets the healing necessary to survive this one. Out, still trying to play this one. Glister stuck. Gets taken out the beat down of Hawk. Shock, surely you can't keep trying to play this one now. They've got no ultimates to work with. They're going to need some sort of miracle to try and find an edge in this one. The Blizzard is pulled out of Pelican. And this should surely, surely mean the win for the Atlanta Reign. They've isolated Super, but he charges back out. Violet dead, though, means no healing for the shock, and Atlanta are going to be able to stabilize. Glista, in the midst of that prior team fight, went for a teleport into the back lines. Wait. There's okay. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> a cheeky. I like it, but not going to work. Yeah. Glista went for a teleport in the middle of that previous team fight and went behind the Hall of the Rain on his own. It wasn't. He wasn't with the rest of his team. They weren't trying to flip the map. He just tried to get behind. Teleporter broken. Glista killed. No damage in that team fight. And then Pelican was able to get off a really nice ult. Both of these maze, though, have now syncopated their ultimates. So Nero's going to get his while Pelican's is offline. And that's going to continue for as long as this map... Well, <laughs> I mean, as long as the map plays out. It's only 40 seconds left, though, if the Shock are not able to take checkpoint B. If it continues, exactly. The Atlanta Reign have got these double support ultimates and they're not going to be messing around. Already dropping them straight through. That's the Sim War from Glister just to at least dissipate a bit of the damage that might be coming towards them. Wall as well pushes them back, now just down to 25 seconds for the Shock. The pressure is on for them to try and find any sort of advantage. That's going to be... Okay, the Sabar comes through, the Shadow does not connect, the positioning again swapped around, the Atlanta Reign though, pushed back around the corner, the Blizzard is good, it's a good connection. Modal player is going to get caught up in this one, but the Atlanta Reign still have a couple of tricks up their own sleeves. Four seconds remaining for them. Pelican off to the side angle here. Kai does have the Sim War, but it looks like they're not going to be committing into it. They're going to let them push it. Wait, they are. The overtime push comes through. The ultimates, I spoke too soon. Pelican has they ult. do have the Blizzard. Pelican is going to drop it down. And Super, well, he's got nowhere to run. Frozen up around the side. Pelican trying to get this pick, pushing them all away. FD got Force Choi dropping down. Desperate to keep this overtime moving for them. But when they're missing two of their players, it just doesn't look likely. The Atlanta Reign have shown so much proactivity in terms of this entire map. The ability to find these advantages. Now Nero left alone on the cart. The ice block will at least keep them in it for the time being, but not for much longer. The Atlanta Reign, what a dominant map from them on King's Row. I think they can be really, really quite pleased moving into this series now off the back of that, gaining the lead. Smiles all round for the rain, especially from Gator and Massa, the two driving forces behind these Rhine rush comps. And it's focused determination from the shock. They know it's going to be a difficult battle from here. The Atlanta Reign managed to win on the shock's map pick. So now either team has won one map pick of the others. The shock started things out on Atlanta Reign's control map. And King's Row, it's just so good for both teams. And like we said coming into it, Atlanta have looked excellent in terms of their strategy, their preparation, their understanding of how these rush comps work. Are we going to see either team crumble and lose confidence in the Ryan comps, though? I don't think so. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Both teams seem very happy to mirror each other. We're heading into our next map. The Shock are one map away from elimination. And for the Atlanta Reign, moving one step closer to that goal of the Grand Finals. We'll find out just how this series might be continuing or finishing after this break.
Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Hi there, this is Benjamin Jolafay, but you may know me as Ben Best. As you know, I'm an excellent painter. What you may not know is that I'm also a really good looking spokesman for the Overwatch League. Ben Best. Ben Best. While you will never have both my skills and my look, what you can have are Overwatch League perks. All you have to do is connect your Battle.net account with your YouTube account while you watch the Overwatch League playoffs and you will start earning League tokens. Normally, that would be enough, but hey, it's the playoffs. And you've got a nice face. So here's what I can do for you. For every 3 hours of Overwatch League playoffs you watch, you can earn 3 new Overwatch League skins. That is 9 new skins, all for doing what you are going to do anyway. Watch your favorite, but relatively okay looking, Overwatch League teams battle through the playoffs. So take it from me, Ben Best. Connect your accounts, watch the Overwatch League playoffs, and level your game up today.
Au revoir et bon match Our two-time reigning champions are one map away from elimination. The Atlanta Reign are so close, they can taste it. They've done it before. They bested them in 2019, and they sent them down to the lower bracket for their eventual lower bracket run into the grand finals victory. But these are some different circumstances now that is facing them in the San Francisco Shock. Well, I mean, they're going to have to dig deep for this next map win. They certainly are. There are no roster changes happening here for San Francisco. In fact, the same could be said for both of our teams. I feel like we've got a read on what these guys are doing. Oh, yeah. They, they know how the opposite team plays, and we're seeing the mirror match. It's Both teams believe that they can be better than their opponents if they just perfect the execution level. Uh, thus far, it's been the rain with the edge, especially when it comes to the strategy on Hanamura, on King's Row, the teleporter usage, the positioning. It's been glorious for, from them. And it's validating what Custer was saying on the desk when he said uh, he believes that the Atlanta Reign are the best rush team in the world right now. Rush, not necessarily the meta, but very usable, forcible on a lot of these maps. And the shock is sending us to Havana. Back-to-back -back map picks for San Francisco. King's Row did not work out. Havana, you can definitely get away with playing Rush for the whole of the map if you want to. Although most teams will trend towards Orisa-based comps as you get away from point A. Yeah, for my sake, Josh, kind of hope they do, honestly. I feel like I'm burning enough calories like a chess grandmaster <laughs> trying to keep track of all these teleporters. They're going one way, the other way, mm. grouping up, splitting the directions. I mean, I get to see all the information and it's confusing me. Yes, imagine I, how they feel. I can't quite imagine you as a chess grandmaster. I can't. I, I'm just, you I know, just faith in myself. Throwing that one out there. Unbelievable amounts of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> Step into a tournament. Uh, you, you with a uh, with a monocle on, mm -hmm, playing mm -hmm. chess, watching Knight E4, pop a cock. I <laughs> That's that's how I imagine uh -huh. you would be, you know, in an alternate reality. What's that um, that chess opening that gets people in like four moves? Uh, the scholar's mate. Yeah, I, that's been gotten used against me a couple of times. <laughs> I, I, whenever I whenever I give it a go, not ideal. Chess, not my game. Well, the shark are coming out here playing the rush defense, and Atlanta will be very prepared against this. They have a number of ideas of how to break it. Kai starting out here on Widow will just look for a pick. He <laughs> he did manage to find it on King's Row. Yep. I'd be surprised if he got it again. The success rate is not usually that oh high. Oh my goodness. All right, back to Spawn he goes and headed to Sim. They have a couple of plays where they like to flip the map. You can see already, it's going to be the wars. Just pulled up, now the teleports comes through. Kai just going to be sending a couple of turrets their way. It's just a little fake, it makes they, the shock back off. Yeah, just to ensure that they destroy it and back away from it. Pulling back the positioning here. The shock are just looking for that opening pick to try and at least save a bit of that time up. But Nero goes down. What a pick. And now they're jumping on them. Kai as well. He's flipped the angle with that teleport right into the back line. It is a clean team fight win here for the Atlanta Reign. You can start to feel this momentum. Three minutes in the time bank. The Shock really not able to take that much off. And this is where the positioning becomes, or, and the pathing becomes so predictable. Shock are gonna speed boost to the high ground. They're gonna try and drop down onto the objective. Take a look here from Pelican's point of view. His icicle no aim is nasty good. It's only one of the reasons why he's the best May in the league, or has been for the regular season portion of it. But here we go. The Shock coming up top have been red completely. There's Gator getting to the rest of his Earth Shatter just with that fire strike. It's a war. It's gonna be dropping off right around the corner nobody can follow up on the heels violet blocked away mass around the corner he's gonna pay for it with his life but not before he gets the two picks for them now pushing forwards kai has so much to work with gator drops down that earth shatter too short of a connection to nero. too many targets just nero but enough to push them away the shock realize it's a lost fight we have to back away if we want any chance of trying to contest this in the final moments yeah violet was forced to use his immortality field nero dropped to the floor and the shock had been wiped off the face of the earth this teleporter helps them get back to the fight early, though. And the shock. Oh, they've been walled off. Can anyone contest? Yes. No! Choi Obin just threw oh, his mech in the air. My. He went for the self-destruct, but he was the only player blocking the objective. And that's checkpoint A in almost record time going to the rain. That's brutal for the shock. You're going to be looking at that one. You're thinking, oh, my word. We've just invested ultimates into... Fire ended up losing it. 
Yeah. Plan to rain four minutes, 21 seconds in their time bank, steadily pushing this one forward as well. They are feeling themselves. Now the Atlanta Rain are going to get into advanced positions once more. They don't have the greatest alts to try and keep this momentum going. They could go for a self-destruct engage, but that's pretty difficult on Havana Point B. They're really waiting for Iris's ult to come online. There's a wall to push them away. Shatter available for Super as well, holding on to this one. Fire Strike, a little bit mistimed with that one. Boot down to the low ground as well. Drops a Shatter around the corner. That's two players down. Sambaya from Massa just trailing away, and with the Blizzard falling, they eventually get that team fight win that they were looking for. Gorgeous play from Matthew Delisi. Super lands the Shatter there under so much pressure, and then he just has to hide in the corner with his shield up, but he's already done the damage. Nero as well committing the Blizzard into that team fight as the Shock desperately try and keep their main tank alive and their hopes in this series as well. Three minutes and the Atlanta Rain are coming back in without double support ultimate. The Shatter is their main tool that could turn this one around, but Gade is currently getting hammered. So much pressure on that shield. Yeah, not a lot charge left. He's going to manage it perfectly. There's a symbol dropping down to the low ground, pushed away. Perhaps, I don't know if that was a bit of miscommunication or just a boot, but now they push him right around the corner. Choi is way out no of position. Glister gets taken out by a pin. What is going on here? The shock, they're dropping like flies. They got sandwiched. Gator jumped down from the low ground, threw a fire strike, hopped back up and slammed Glister against the wall. Just smushed him. And the Atlanta Rain are heading with some pace towards checkpoint B. Violet has an ant matrix. But I'm not sure what more they're going to be able to do. Violet's not going to be in a great position to use it. Teleport this. is going to come up on the high ground. The wall is preemptive. This. That's such a good wall. Choi has to go over the top. He's taken so much damage just to do so, keeping it contested up. Now we see that window drop to the side. Iris has one of his own, finally going to be using it. And now Hawk, look at this angle he's found himself upon. The high ground position, just trying to deny up as much damage as they could do. The Blizzard into the corner. It's Glister in a lot of trouble, and eventually the shield will burst. The Shock, they don't have much else to really hold on to this one. The Atlanta Rain, again, the complete control and mastery over the positioning of Checkpoint B. They are steamrolling their way through Havana. This is lightning fast. Three and a half minutes. The rush comps do start to get a little less potent as we head towards Checkpoint C. But when you're running them in the mirror, the pressure is really on the defense. The Shock have a couple of good places to hold. One is the archway in front of you, but obviously they don't want to take the fight there. The second is that high ground hut that they've much pr <gasps> pressured past. Violet's off the map as well. The Shadow from Super to try and turn things around. That's wild. He pulls out the ult just to try and clutch it, but when you lose Violet that early, I mean, this is disastrous now for the San Francisco Shock. I assume that Hawk used his boosters through the teleport and just timed it perfectly to catch Violet and knock him off the map. That's wild. Now the, the Atlanta Rain are going to be able to press up a little more, stop the Shock from taking advanced positioning, and the next team fight's going to happen around the archway. They've turned Checkpoint C into a two-fight defense. You almost never see that. You really almost never see that. The Atlanta Rain as well. Look at these support ultimates. They have everything to just keep this one rolling all the way into checkpoint C. The boot from Massa again. Impeccable timing. Now the Samurai on top of it. The damage that he's doing. This guy, he can't be stopped right now. And the Atlanta Rain, of course, they just chuck every, everything into it. Super forced to hold the shield. Troy Hilbin with a 2k just from the remake. In what world is that even a possibility? Iris and Kai out of the fight. And he may have just bought again another lifeline here for the shock. It would be so fitting that it happens on Havana just to stop that momentum like he has done in the past. <laughs> what? <laughs> How does that happen? It was chaos everywhere for Atlanta and the Shock, but but come on, a double kill with the remake? I've never seen that before. <laughs> All right, Atlanta are coming back into this. They have the Blizzard. They can force a team fight around the objective, around the payload, but they've got to navigate Choyobin's defense matrix. And the Shock have double support ultimates coming up in this fight too, so Ooh. either way, the Shock are favored. They get the freeze there for just a moment, but what, where's Pelican going to throw his Blizzard? He has to wait until there's players that drop down to contest. And now he's going to use it right at the back of the side here. I spoke to try and destroy it away from this one. FDGod's already gone down as well. No at one's 96%. Really dealing with him. Another freeze comes through. Pelican, just one quick little punch to the face. We'll take it out now. Going to try and at least stop them here, but the Atlanta Reign have got way too much speed behind them as well the early start of havana here the fact that they just got so much momentum winning those team fights back to back to back 
a minute and three seconds is what they've been awarded with a full completion on Havana. And now the shock are staring at an almost insurmountable goal in terms of Havana. Not a lot of teams are able to get that kind of time and pace. That crumble defense might be their three-peat hopes. The Shock have got to be able to win Havana to force this to a fifth map. And that time bank is almost never seen. That looks like two teams playing on different tiers of competition. The Atlanta Rain just stomped the Shock into the dust. It would require an incredible effort for San Francisco to get back into this. The payload barely stopped. Yep. The Shock won. One team fight on checkpoint B. One team fight checkpoint B. I think one, one team fight on C. checkpoint C. That was it. Yep. Two team fights that they won, as far as I can remember. Other than that, the payload cruised forwards the entire time. Take a look at this replay. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and it's Hawk. The, the teleporters are getting red so hard by Atlanta Rain. As Glister goes for that TP, there's an instant reaction from Hawk to just use his boosters and sail through it. A minimum, he does damage to everyone and stops the push happening as quickly. And at best, he gets a knockback kill like that. Almost got a 2k as well if Choi Obin had not been able to get himself back onto the high ground. A shock. It's time to try and answer back any way you can. It's the three peat dreams on the live already clashing blow for blow, swinging into one another. Super just trying to build up that Earth Shatter as best as he can, but it's an early immortality field that is forced out and Choi out of the mech. It's not a great start for them, but any pick they get will be what they're looking for. And a pin round the corner? Well, that's a, a bit start. of collateral damage. This has to be the beginning of the momentum for the shock. This was dealt with very quickly. Similar kind of pace to what Atlanta Rain set. Three and a half minutes as they break this. But now you need to see them have a good reaction. I'd like to see them press forwards, start to gain some early positioning, and catch the Atlanta Rain off guard as they try and go for this second team fight. Here's a replay of Glister teleported into the back lines. Oh, wow. Okay. Wall in his face, well. just able to take down Gator. But at that point, it's essentially Super that gets the kill because he's pinned Gator into a corner. Yeah. Not messing around, already back at it with this team fight here. And Matrix just around the corner. It's a response from both teams. And they got a bit of extra damage as well to work with as they're just trying to land it through. Iris ends up using this immortality field, and there wasn't really That's much a good in the way of it. What a shatter. Super drops it down. Now they're going to be trying to walk forwards, but already Pelican is taken out. Iris started to take a couple of risks. Needs to win out this fight, but has to reload. He can't quite take out Violet. A clean team fight win for the Shock. It needed to happen if they had a chance in hell of trying to take this map away, but so far they're playing like they absolutely do not want to go home. Look at this shatter from Super. It was so good. Knocked Pelican and Hawk to the ground. The follow-up was instant onto Pelican, and Hawk was out of mech immediately as well. Here we see Nero with an excellently placed Blizzard, but a counter shatter does well after he got to save them. Already, Gator is deep in the back line currently, just trying to fight all of them. It's a fight taking place on two fronts. that pushed around at the angle. Kai has got so much damage built up. And the Shock, they choose to regroup. The fast engagement coming out from the Atlanta Rain here is working out in their favor. But now we see Choi sends in the South Destruct. Massa goes down the pin at the same time. It's simultaneous. A bit of a set play to try and crack things open. And it wins a team fight for them. Beautiful micro disengage. And the Shock have four minutes in the time bank. This payload needs to make progress fast through checkpoint B if the Shock want a chance at a similar pace that the Atlanta Rain set. Atlanta have been so fast back into these fights. They're just trying to take as many team fights as possible. But they no longer have any good ultimates. They expended them all to try and slow down the momentum at checkpoint A. So now the shock with three and a half minutes pressing their way forwards. Super could once again be a game changer here. That's the shatter. It's aggressive coming out from the Atlanta Rain already just Swinging away at them, the Immortality Field is forced out early, dropped down to the low ground, they're trying to force the shield out, the fadeaway fire strike, super, he finds it, Gator's gone, another couple of swings and Kai's dealt with on top of it, all the damage for the Atlanta Rain is now going to be missing in this fight and you're starting to see, Bren. I mean the momentum has just shifted, This is what This is what people talk about when they say shock magic, if you're a fan of the league and you've only started watching in 2021, you might have thought that everyone was delusional talking about how good the shock could be and believing in their potential at all times, this attack is what we've seen from the shock in previous years, they suddenly just elevate to another level. Pelican's got to go huge with this one. 
Freeze does force out that ice block. Now the Blizzard into it, but Choi wouldn't eat. The ultimate's gone completely. The one tool they were hoping for that was going to change the tide of this fight. And the shock, well, it's just a never... Oh, another day in the office is what it feels like at the moment, but I mean, we know it's not the case. They've been pushed to the brink in this series, but right now it's four minutes, six <laughs> seconds on the time bank. <laughs> what a response from the shock. Look at this play from Chiobin as well. He gets around the ice oh, wall I, to I eat it up. To say. He just reads that play perfectly from Pelican. All of these players are locked into the zone right now. It is going to require something incredible for Atlanta Rain to wrestle this back under control. I didn't realize that the San Francisco Shock had another level to them, but they're showing it right now. Here it is. The gear switch in order. There's a symbol. Kai just wants to try and use it to get his team into a good position, but it's a disengage from the Shock again. They walk backwards. Another Choyobin push, perhaps. He looks like he might be lining up for a South Destruct engage. Here it South is. South comes over the top this time. Gator's trying to get a read on it. Right around the corner. The Atlanta Rain. They knew that was coming and they walk onto them. The sound barrier gives them a bit of health to work with. But the freeze comes through. Super just trying to survive holding the shield. He will get taken out. The Atlanta Rain winning this one out ever so slightly. They've got the damage advantage. And that is going to be the team fight when they finally stop the shock. That's the first team fight that Atlanta have won on defense, though. And the shock still have really good spawns here. They're committing old. That's going to be the Ant Matrix into it. But Gator, one of his own. I don't believe it. The Atlanta Rain, what a read from them. I'd rather have my Batista alive, though, than my Lucio, I think, in this scenario, especially considering how fast the spawns are for the shock. Let's see this fight continuing. Hawk That's the Blizzard. Be the Blizzard gone. What an eat from Hawk. Fight continues. A shadow comes down, but it's going to be blocked up. That's Gator just coming up with the goods once more. Gator throws his own out. Will he be able to get anything out from it? It doesn't look likely. The shock. No one's really dealt with Glister, and he has charged up that beam. Still coming through with it. It's a team fight win for the shock, and this is getting so dicey, so drawn out. Two minutes and 15 seconds. There are so many ways that could, this could go now. Violet could engineer an advantage for San Francisco with his Ant Matrix. There's a couple of options here. They could try and overwhelm the high ground that Gate is currently playing on, or they can just play around the payload and try and uh, throw damage through it towards the finish line. Shock with double support, ultimate Choi Obin as well with that self-destruct. FD, FD God looks like he wants to go for a boop here, maybe into a self-destruct play. Possibly teleport into the back. They've swapped the positionings round. The window is there. The Atlanta Rain are playing aggressive into it, though. Sound barrier as well. It supplements it. No more immortality field, and Super has fallen. Glister goes down on top of it. That's a great recovery from the Atlanta Rain. Exactly when they needed it, too. Seems inevitable now that Atlanta are going to set a better time back. The question is simply can the shock finish with anything comparable? Can the shock finish at all? This is everything on the line right now for San Francisco. The three P dreams, they could die here. They really could. Nero close to the blizzard, but that's pretty much the only thing they're working towards. The Atlanta Arena got everything almost. And they're currently holding that defensive position, pushed away. The wall comes up around the corner. You see this Ant Matrix as well drop down. Super is in such a precarious position. He's taking so much damage and eventually burst down. It has to be a disengage from the shock. There's no way, there's no world in which they win this one. Yeah, Lance Raid's ultimate bank is starting to tick upwards. Sub one minute right now as Massa escapes around the side of Havana, dipping his way up and over the top. The Atlanta Rain have a shadow that could be game changing. Super getting up to his own. The Reinhardt mind game starting to get into teleport. play as they teleport and try and flip them out. What a wall. Pelican, he's coming up with some big, big damage now. The shadow dropped down around the corner. That's Gator. You got one player down, and that's the Blizzard aid up as well. With it, this could just be the Shock's hopes and dreams. They're trying to finish with a bit of time. The Shadow Super frozen. Not going to be getting anything from it. The Atlanta Rain. Well, that's everything dropped down. And it's almost everything denied for the San Francisco Shock. There will not be a three-peat today. A few seconds standing between the Atlanta Rain and getting the win. Well, they upset them back in 2019, but this was anything but that. This is an Atlanta Rain that is here to play. And our two-time champions are going home. What a victory today for the Rain. You said it, Bren. This is not 
an upset. Atlanta was simply the better team today. They have been, in fact, the better team all year around, and they've sent home the defending champions. Atlanta were able to get that victory in the head-to-head, -head, in the Reinhardt mirror, looking superb in terms of how they used the teleporters, how they were operating around the map strategically, positionally. They won on two of the San Francisco Shocks map picks, and they looked excellent when they got their chances on Hanamura too. This team is currently looking like the best rush team in the world. And it's all smiles for them as they head towards a minimum podium finish. They're going to have their opportunity just after this to play for a spot in the grand finals. But it's already the best season that Atlanta has ever had. These players are stepping up in this postseason and they look phenomenal. This team is not the most flexible in the world. They don't have the most star players packed into one roster, but they are amazing at what they play and they've refined it to such a degree that they look like they can go toe to toe with the absolute best in the world. Yeah, today they were absolutely the better team. I mean, the San Francisco Shock definitely stretched it out. You can see how close those individual maps are, but the scoreline, it doesn't change and it doesn't lie. 3-1 win for the Atlanta Reign. One of the players who was instrumental in making it happen. Well, our player of the match presented by Xfinity is going to be going to Gator in this particular instance. What a play, honestly. Instinctual when it comes to a lot of his Earth Shadow usages. Playing around as well. He had a couple of funny moments early on. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's, it's either 0 IQ or 200 IQ. Depends how many players you take off the map. But I tell you what, the entire series long, he was the consistent factor in just playing around the team. The entire time, right place, right time. Yeah, he landed some enormous shadows that were game-changing for his team as well. That one in particular, <laughs> in slow-mo, I think Super Shield may have been broken as well. I mean, that is just incredible instinctual plays. But more so than getting the huge moments, Gator is also the spearhead of this rush composition. And alongside Massa and alongside Kai with the Symmetra, they dictate the pace of how Atlanta plays and which areas of the map they fight over, how they take aggression. And they just look sublime doing it. Gator's Reinhardt is clearly up there with the best in the world. Oh yeah. And they should be so proud of what they've accomplished today. I'm so excited to see as well, how far can the Atlanta Reign go? Yeah. I mean, it's a hard path ahead of them, but obviously they have their sights on the grand finals that is going to be taking place tomorrow. I'll tell you this, Brent, they seem to match up very well against North American teams. The Western region should be scared of the Atlanta Reign, I think. Uh, it's, you know, they're not playing against Chengdu, they're not playing against Shanghai. It's Dallas coming up next. So. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, I have been so, so impressed over the course of this tournament. I mean, they've shown so many different looks on top of it as well. Yeah. Able to lean into their star DPS multiple times. Yeah, just an unreal performance from them as well. And knocking out our two-time champions as yeah. well. What a way. I mean, they're not done yet. They're no. not done yet. We're going to go to a short break. On the other side of things, of course, we have another match to be played. We're going to be taking a bit of a break so that the players will get a bit of a breather as we head into the next match. So don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back soon enough with even more Overwatch League action for the 2021 playoffs. Come on, come on, come on. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Xfinity, the preferred internet provider of the Overwatch League.
hello and welcome back to our game break. Zoe here are joined by Reinforce as well as Costa and Danny. Those are four people I just named who got predictions right. <laughs> Unlike you. <laughs> we, see you. Yeah. we see you. We see you. You gotta, you gotta take the L this time. Bam. Yeah, nice. big L, big L. Yeah. Unreal. Admit it. Yeah. Unreal. Yeah. <laughs> We're not smug. I'm so smug about it. I actually called home about that one. I'm not going to lie. I, gra grandma says hi. Very disappointed in you. Very proud of me. Uh, but I've always been her favorite. So there is that. Now, uh, we do have a match we do want to break down. And that is, of course, the action between the San Francisco Shock and the Atlanta Rain. Now, for whatever reason, the San Francisco Shock have decided to take the brawl to Atlanta Rain. Costa, for why? <sighs> It has to be confidence in your own play. It, it can't be something that they're like, oh, we can't do anything else. They must have gone into this match believing that they could take that head-to-head. -head. And they did on that first map. We went to Nepal. And honestly, there was a main tank difference going on. I think Super played a great game. And they really were showing that they understand how to play the brawl. And I said this in the you know, lead-up to this match. The San Francisco Shock are probably the second best ball team. But unfortunately, they went up against... The first best brawl team, which is <laughs> yep. a problem. And I think the Atlanta Reign proved why they are the best <laughs> at this composition. They are just so smart in the way that they engage. And I think, Johnny, you actually highlighted it when we were watching the match. You just said the San Francisco Shock were just a little flat-footed. They were never the team taking the initiative. They were never the team that were going first and being sort of the people that were going to be winning the match. And I think that's what Atlanta is so good at brawl. They're always making plays and they're always you know, making the right decisions. And I think they did that to a T today. Yeah, I, I think you noticed the discrepancy between the May and the Symmetra play uh, yeah. in this series. Uh, I think that Pelican and Kai yeah. did a fantastic job playing the May uh, and the Symmetra. And it always seemed like Atlanta Reign, they always had their superior positioning, utilizing that Symmetra teleporter. And those May walls from Pelican all the time, they came in so clutch, cutting off people like uh, Super on the San Francisco Shock front line. And with that, the San Francisco Shock, as you said, they were on their back foot, they couldn't really get aggressive, they couldn't really make plays, instead they were relying on the Atlanta Rain to make those mistakes and then Shock capitalizing on them. That being said though, I don't necessarily think you can harp on the Shock for taking this brawl head to head too much. I think the natural response for a lot of fans of the Shock or perhaps the community in general would be to say like, hey, this is the Atlanta Rain, like why did you even go head to head? playing this brawl composition, which I understand because Atlanta is the best brawl team, but I don't think considering Shock and the way they play the game, you can't be too disappointed about them actually taking this duel because it's a composition they're really good at, and historically speaking, they were the goats of goats, uh, yeah. which is eerily similar to. So Shock, I, I think they gave it a good old attempt. It wasn't <laughs> enough this time around, but they put up a good fight. That's, that's the thing, right? Like, I mean, you are in the playoffs, you want to play to your comfort pick. And if the opponent's team happens to be very, very good at the same style, you still probably want to run with what you're the most confident in. And, and if that's Brawl for the Shock, then that's that. And they gave it a, 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 a good go. And what I love personally, just as a little side quest, a little side story, is <laughs> that the last map that the Shock won in 2021 <laughs> uh, has been Control. Take that meme. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, really, really, really going full circle there. Uh, it's been a phenomenal performance from the Shock this year, though. Yeah, no, I do want to say something as well. I want to give a quick shout out to Choi. He, I think he was great game. Great game. He had a great game, and I know I said he was an average diva. <laughs> I want to okay. take that back. Choi, you're an amazing diva. I'll, I'll one up you. Okay, I'll post this question: Is Choi the best off tank ever in Overwatch One? Oh. He's got to be one of the most one consistent. The if you're going back all the way to the inaugural season, I think if there has been one player on, on any team which was just like consistent on, on yeah. one of the highest levels, highest levels. even not flashy uh, most of the times, but consistent. Joy is the diva I want to have in my game. Yeah, I Like mean, I know I can rely on I'll give the like candidate. Always. Yeah, I, absolutely, Zoe. I, I think it's Fury, yeah. Fury so Hanbin, so. Void, Choi. There, and then there's a few other people at that level. Oh, but he's those about four, to just name I think. Every name everything. Okay, cool. <laughs> Mavix? No. That's all right. I think those four are like the top names. And yeah. Choyobin, I mean, of course, they won with San Francisco Shock 2019, 2020. And once more, he's put up an extremely good performance here in the playoffs, playing some of the best of horses done all year. Uh, Choyobin, he's been fantastic to watch. And those Blizzard Eats at the end on the. Uh, 
Havana. Uh, fantastic. How many did he eat? I think he ate about four. In all the of them. I think all of them. them. <laughs> all of them. Think, uh, Havana, just just on that map, I think I saw like two or three. Yeah, two or three. Yeah, yeah. he's very impressive play. Yeah, he's yeah. just like that hungry, hungry choy pillar. Like it's just like. <laughs> That's a new book coming out, uh, hitting at the market 2022. Uh, but yeah, uh, unfortunately, of course, this was our two-time champion out now, yeah. right? Uh, so that's, of course, a massive storyline. They were not able to get the three-peat. That means uh, the good news is that Brent's mustache is gone. Oh, finally! Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, but also, Danny, for you, that means that your prediction... Oh. Oh, forget about that. Yeah, man. yeah. It's funny how you forget about it when uh, all of a sudden <laughs> it, it goes to naught. Don't worry, I also predicted Dante to be yeah. the MVP of the league and that also <laughs> didn't work. How's Mag doing? <laughs> oh. I'm still very proud of Dante. it. Dante? <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, all right, we all get to be wrong here and there. Right, chat? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pull back. <laughs> That's that, copium right I there. never let anything go. Uh, yeah, but again, of course, congratulations to the Shock for making it into the playoffs. What a great showing. Yeah, uh, really how many have. moments that they had this season. We can't wait to see what that squad has in store for all of us next season. Now, Perfect. only two more matches remain in the Overwatch League 2021 season. But so many players and teams had enormous moments to bring us uh, to this very point. And our favorite moments are the ones where, you know, everything is on the line. When players really come up clutch because clutch well that's just that's just life right that's everything in life so join us as we take a look back at the top 10 winning moments of the 2021 Awards League season I love you shark